Hey guys, in this video, I'll be teaching you cross plus EO pair, which is a method I've created to plan cross plus one, and I think it's easier than what people normally do. So before doing cross plus EO pair, you need to know how EO works. If you don't, then I'd recommend watching a ZZ tutorial or something to get an idea of how to do it. But essentially, an edge is good. It has good orientation if you can solve it into its position without using F moves or B moves, and otherwise it's bad. So just as a really quick example, in this orientation with yellow top and green front, this edge is bad because if I try putting it in its position, it's flipped. And the only way it can get there is with an F move, and now it's there. And then this edge is a good edge because I can solve it to its position without using an F or B move. So there are various ways to recognize good and bad edges, but I'm not going to go over them in this video, so uh, yeah, watch a ZZ tutorial or something. Now the idea behind EO cross is to plan cross plus one in such a way that you're not actually looking at the color of each sticker on each piece, but you rather look at its orientation. So I've set up a really easy example here. We have a three move cross, which is going to be L, F prime, D prime. And this orange green is going to be my first pair. So if I were doing a normal cross plus one, um, I'd look at my cross solution. It does L, that doesn't change either of these pieces. Then I do F prime, um, that moves this edge up to here. And more specifically, it moves this orange sticker to here and this green sticker to here. So I'll have to remember that I have like both oranges on top and then I figure out which F to L case that is. So like this, both of these are orange, and then I'd solve that pair. But when I'm doing cross plus EO pair, I actually don't care about either of these orange or green stickers. Instead, I look at the edge's orientation. So right now, this is a bad edge because it can't be solved without doing an F move. But my cross solution, which is L F prime, that F prime changes this bad edge into a good edge and that means it can be solved rotationless. Okay, so I've set up the exact same cross on this cube over here, so it's still going to be L, F prime, D prime, but my first pair is a bit different. Originally, it looks like this. Uh, right now, this is a bad edge, but on my other cube, this is a good edge, so I'm doing this just to show you the difference. So back to this cube, um, once I do my cross solution and I get to my F prime, this bad edge becomes a good edge, and so I know I can solve this rotationless, and so I know it's this case. But on the other hand, if I had this cross, and I did, right now this is a good edge, and then doing my cross solution, this becomes a bad edge, I know that it can't be the rotationless case, because over here, this case is rotationless, this case is not, unless you do some fancy stuff. But just thinking simple, this cannot be solved rotationless. Okay, so the way I'd actually solve this EO pair is by doing my cross solution, knowing that because this edge is oriented, I'm going to have this specific F2L case, and then I'll go ahead and solve that. Now, on this case, I know that this edge is going to switch from being a good edge to a bad edge after I do my cross solution, and so it can't be the case that I just did on that cube. It's going to have to be this case instead. So I'll just rotate and solve that. So the idea of cross plus EO pair is a little bit abstract at first, but I think doing a bunch of examples really helps. So I'm gonna do some actual scrambles and talk through my thought process for cross plus EO pair. Okay, here's the first example. I'll pick my cross color first. I think yellow cross looks pretty good, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm actually gonna solve this using D R prime d r2, d f prime. So I'm just going to do those moves to, to maybe make it easier to visualize, but it's like this. And that solves cross. So for first pair, um, there's not a lot of good options because all the pairs get moved around quite a lot. But let's look at this... Um, green orange pair. So if I go through my cross solution, well before that, right now this is a bad edge because to solve it I'd have to do an F move. And if I go through my cross solution, um, I'll just actually do it so it's easier to visualize. Once I get to here, 
I do an F prime, and this edge goes from being a bad edge to a good edge. And that means I know that this is going to be a rotationless pair, so I know it's going to have this solution. Um, I don't know how to undo that. <laughs> Something like that, okay. Because if it was the other edge orientation, like this, then I'd know this is a bad edge, I'd have to rotate and solve it like that. Okay, here's the next scramble. Uh, white cross looks really good. I'll do an R2, F prime, D, R prime. And then for first pair, I'll do this, uh, blue, red. So right now this edge is bad. And then I'll go through my solution. So I do R2, F prime. That's still a bad edge, doesn't change. And then D, R prime. That's still a bad edge, doesn't change. So I know that I'll have a free pair here, and I'll have to rotate to solve it. And here's the other thing that could have happened if the edge had the other orientation. This would have been a good edge, and it would have stayed a good edge. So I know it'll be this case, and I can solve it rotationless. But instead, this is a bad edge, and I'll solve it like that. Okay, here's the next scramble. Uh, my cross solution is going to be white cross, and then I'll do U, R prime, D2, F, R, D2. Um, and I'm going to do red, green as my first pair. So right now, this is a good edge. It can be solved with just an L2. But when I do my cross solution, I'm just going to go ahead and do it so it's easier to see. Right here, I do an F, which changes this from being a good edge to a bad edge. So if I finish my cross, I know I'll have this case, and I'll need to rotate to solve it. Um, on the other hand, if this was a flipped edge, if it started out as bad and then doing the F made it good, I know that I would have a rotationless F2L case because this is a good edge now, and that would look like this. All right, next scramble. Um, I'm gonna do yellow cross. I'm gonna start in this orientation, do F prime L, U prime to put this edge up here, then just solve the rest. And for first pair, I'll do this one, just because it doesn't seem to be affected too much. So right now, this is a good edge. And I'll see what happens to that edge as I go through my solution. So F prime L, U prime. And the rest of my cross solution doesn't affect this edge. So I know this is going to be a good edge. And I can solve it into the back right here, rotationless. And then I'll just go ahead and plan out the, the corner. So R prime doesn't change the corner, then B prime moves it to here, and then R prime moves it to here. So I'll know that I'll have the corner here, the edge here, and it's going to be rotationless, meaning that it's going to look like this kind of solution. Um, if this was, if this started out as a bad edge, and it stayed a bad edge because it, my cross solution didn't change it, then this isn't gonna work, that's a flipped pair, and I know I have to rotate to solve it. Okay, here's the last example. I'm going to do white cross by doing R prime F R L to solve this, this, this in their slots. And then I'll finish with D prime R prime to put orange in. Uh, I'm gonna try doing this example without actually doing any moves on the cube and maybe that'll help. So my first pair is going to be blue orange. So the edge is over here, it's bad, it's flipped in slot and the corner is over here. So when I do my cross solution, the R prime F R just moves this here and back, so that doesn't change. And then I'll do an L. This moves up to here with white facing up. And then D prime R prime. Now this edge goes up to here, and it's still a bad edge because I didn't do any F or B moves on it. So I'm having my corner right here and my edge right here, but this is a bad edge, so it's not going to be... Oh, let me try to set it up. So it's not going to be this case, because this is a good edge and it's rotationless, and it can be solved like that. But I've predicted that this edge is going to go up here in a bad orientation, so I'll have to rotate and solve it. Well, I'll rotate this way, so it goes in the back left, but that's besides the point. So if I actually do my cross solution like this, you can see that I have this F2L case, where this is bad, and that means I rotate here and solve it like that. So hopefully this video was helpful. Personally, I found that doing cross plus EO pair actually was a lot easier than tracking the sticker colors. 
I'm not sure if it'll work for everyone, but it worked for me, so maybe it's worth a try. Uh, thanks for watching this kind of lengthy video, and goodbye.